Jan Martel's novel, The Life of Pi, tells the story of Pi, a young man who is the only human survivor when a ship full of zoo animals sinks uh, in the middle of the ocean. Pi, uh, Pi finds himself on a life raft with a hyena, a zebra, and a tiger. The hyena eats the zebra, the tiger eats the hyena, and, and Pi fears for his life, but manages to tame and even to befriend the tiger. And over many months, they are adrift together at sea, encountering many adventures, and their, their, their survival is a tale of awe and wonder, as they encounter flying fish, fluorescent birds, a floating island full of meerkats and carnivorous plants. When they finally wash up ashore many, many months later, the tiger jumps, jumps ashore, but then turns back to look at Pi as if to say thank you before running off into the bush, never to be seen again. Investigators then come to ask Pi how he managed to be the only survivor and how he survived for so long, but they flat out refuse to believe his version of events, saying they are too fantastical to be true. So Pi tells a different version of his survival story, a far more grim story of misery and suffering and survival. And at the end, he asks the investigators, so which is the better story? Which do you prefer? To which they reluctantly agree, the one with the animals. To which Pi replies, and so it goes with God. There are many stories which we can tell in more than one way. The story of our universe begins 13.7 billion years ago when a singularity exploded into the Big Bang, sending matter and energy out in every direction. And over billions of years, clouds of hydrogen gas coalesce together and, the, and gravity condensed them to the point where nuclear fusion would begin and stars were born. And around five billion years ago, one such star, star which we call the sun, coalesced and, and had, had leftover matter orbiting, which became planets. And the planets in time cooled enough so that on one planet, single-celled life could emerge. And through, and through a random mutation and natural selection, those single-set organisms developed into far more complex organisms. And eventually one species, humans, grew bigger brains and became the dominant, life, life, the dominant species on the planet. And they developed various cultures and various, and, and various elements, but over, but, and they remained the dominant life form on the planet for as long as the, the planet and the atmosphere could support their ever-growing numbers. At some stage in the future, if they're not, if they're not wiped out by, by an asteroid or some other cataclysm, eventually the sun itself will destroy the Earth when near the end of its life, it will expand billowing outwards past the orbits of its own, of its own closest four planets and the Earth will be vaporized and all human life will be over and forgotten. The sun itself will either dissipate or explode but then uh, that other stars too, larger stars throughout the universe, will continue to live and die. Some of them becoming supernovae, casting out new clouds of gas, which in time, once again coalesce, and the cycle of birth and death of stars continues. But over, over many tens of billions of years, as the universe continues to expand outwards, the forces of gravity become less and less, and there's simply not enough matter to pull together to produce new stars. And so around 100 billion years time, the last stars will die out and no new stars will be born. And then every last element of life will be gone. The universe will be completely devoid of radiation, of light or heat, plummeting into absolute zero. And every trace, every memory that ever been life on Earth or anywhere will be utterly forgotten. We can tell that story of the universe a different way though that the universe began when a trinity of love in missionary tension overflowed into creation when God said, let there be light. And the Big Bang, 13.7 million billion years ago, erupted, sending matter and energy in every direction. And the trinity held all things in unity, sustained all things in being, through the, through the laws of physics which were already in the mind of God. And so, and so stars and planets formed, and eventually on one planet in our, in our solar system, life emerged, single self life emerged because God desired to bring forth living beings. And, through, and, and God guided the processes of evolution so that eventually more complex species would emerge. 
But then God desired to have one part of his creation, one species, whom he could not only love, but could be loved by. And so when humans evolved, God desired to share his own divine nature with them, making them in his own image. But we always were unable to perfectly respond in love to the God who created us because of, our, because of the gift of freedom we are given. And so God entered his own creation, taking, taking on human nature in the form of the, 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 the human Jesus, who shared both divine and human nature. He spoke to us in human words of God, God's kingdom, and God's plans. When he, was, when he was crucified, he offered himself in sacrifice, which became the hinge moment of all, of all, of all creation, bringing all humanity and all creation into a closer relation with God than ever before. And his resurrection of the dead was God's vindication that this was indeed true. God continued to be present within his creation by, by the Holy Spirit, which was available to all people. And all people were invited to continue to build God's kingdom on earth as indeed it was in heaven. And God sustained all, all things in being, and God continued to, to desire to perfect and purify all creation, all humanity, until at some point in the future, at a date we do not yet know, uh, Jesus Christ will be manifest as, as, as king and as judge when he comes to judge all the living and the dead. And so he will bring, all, and he'll bring, uh, bring about a new heaven and a new earth, and he will present the perfected, renewed, purified, reconciled creation to his heavenly Father, where all creation will be gathered around the throne room of God in awe and wonder, worship and majesty for all eternity, where every person who has ever lived will, will exist and be in constant communication with the God who made them. And no matter what happens in the material universe, every person will be alive to God for all eternity. And we could, we could ask... Which of those is the better story? We can tell the story of the universe without re reference to God. Science gives some explanation of many things that have happened and will happen. But it's a far more bleak, far more meaningless description of our lives. Or we can, or we can accept the, the story which involves God. God as our beginning, God as, as our sustainer, and God as our ultimate end. And the, and the role of Jesus Christ, whom today we celebrate as the universal king, his role within all of that, from the very beginning, before creation, his entering into our, into our world, and then his coming in glory to judge the living dead at the end of time, that we will be, we'll be worshipping him and his father upon the throne for all eternity. That's a story I'd like, to, that's the story I follow, the story I invite you to live in too, because we are invited to take our place as meaningful people within that story, that we might indeed come to see God face to face forever.